Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa, and today we're gonna to be talking about different wound debridement methods. If wound care is something that interests you, please hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss anything. So let's get started. So first, I just wanted to touch base on the ability of a wound to heal. Um, so we have three different categories for our wounds. Either they can be healable, maintenance, or non-healing. We have to know what our wound, if it has the ability to heal, before we ever decide to choose a debridement method. That's why I wanted to add this because it is so important that we are not debriding unless absolutely necessary maintenance and non-healing wounds, okay? Um, because if a wound is not going to heal and we're debriding it, debriding, it does remove that slough, eschgar, necrotic tissue. Sometimes we wanna keep it. Um, in healable wounds, we do want that nice, clean wound base, but it's going to heal. Um, maintenance, non-healing, they may never heal. Um, so we just want to make sure we know this before we ever choose a debridement method. So a healable wound is a wound that can heal. Okay, so the patient is adhering to the optimal plan of care and their body has the ability to heal. There's nothing preventing it from healing. A maintenance wound is a wound that has the ability to heal, but there's something preventing it or slowing it down. So this could be comorbidities, um, non-optimal healing um, conditions or lifestyle. So say a patient has a venous leg ulcer and you put on the compression and as soon as you leave or they leave the clinic, they take it off it's not optimal healing so it's either going to not heal or heal very slowly now a non-healing wound these are wounds that will not heal due to a comorbidity systematic disease poor circulation or cancer um, so once again to like deciding what category the wound is in will determine the course of treatment and determine if you can use debridement methods so our surgical debridement. So this is the removal of devitalized tissue. So this is slough, necrotic tissue, eschgar, um, in the presence of underlying infection. Okay, so it is removed using a scalpel or a curette. Um, and this can either be done bedside or in the doctor's office, uh, wound care center, or um, in a operating room. It just completely depends on the extent of the wound. So how big, um, how painful, um, if the patient can handle it, um, and the ability to control post-operative uh, complications like bleeding. Um, so it really depends. You have to use your critical thinking here, what is best. And it also has to be a trained healthcare professional. So um, not every nurse can um, do surgical debridement. So um, me personally, I can do conservative debridement, surgical debridement using um, a scalpel or curette. Um, now it's conservative, so I can remove as much as I can, but I normally don't go down to bleeding tissue, okay? A lot of doctors, vascular surgeons, they will go down until it's a bleeding wound, so you get a brand new clean wound base. Um, me personally, what I do is I normally like to use a curette. That is my tool of choice that I like. I will clean up the wound and then I will use another um, debridement method. So surgical debridement can be used with other methods. Um, so I will get the most out of it that I can. And if there's still a little bit, it's not a completely clean wound base, but I'm worried if I go any deeper, it's going to really start bleeding. Then I will just use another method. For the most part, it's cleaned up and it will um, debride a lot quicker than just using another form. This is the quickest method of debridement. 
Next, we have our enzymatic debridement. So this is a very selective method of debridement for necrotic tissue. Okay, so it is a topical that you put on. It does have to be prescribed by a doctor or nurse practitioner. Um, so it allows the necrotic tissue to detach from the wound base, okay? Um, so it is the slowest method of debridement and it is not to be used with clinical infections, okay? So that is very important. We don't wanna be using enzymatic with clinical infections. Um, and we also don't use this with silver-based products or Dankin solution, okay? Because we are putting, it is a topical, we can't mix it with those products. So our next debridement method is autolytic. So this is the most conservative type of debridement. Um, so this does, um, it is a natural process for the body where phagocytic cells and enzymes break down the necrotic tissue. So this is indicated for um, non-infected wounds, but can be used in conjunction um, therapy with infected wounds. So your antibiotics. Um, so it does require a, mo a moist environment and a functional immune system, okay? So if a patient is immune compromised, probably not the best, best method to choose. Um, and it uses moisture retention dressing to enhance this, okay? Um, so autolytic debridement does take a few days. If, it, if you see significant significant decrease within one to two days, you should be choosing a different method. Um, and the products are alginates, hydrogels, hydrocolloids, and acrylics. Okay, so those um, help with your autolytic debridement. Okay, so next we have biological. Now this is known as larva therapy, so your maggots. Um, so it's not just random fly maggots. It is from the green bottle fly. Um, so they are very specific. Now I will say in the summer months, I have come across maggots in wounds and I'm sure every nurse at one point will come across this. Um, kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies when you're not expecting it, um, but the wound base will be very clean. Um, they clean up the wound base very, very well, um, and it just completely depends where you work and if this is, a, is even an available option. I know where I work, um, it's not something that we do because the larva is not accessible to us. Um, I guess if a doctor really wanted it and had it ordered in, um, but I guess it's a, it's a big thing around here to get them in, so it's not a method. But depending on your location, it could be an option. Next, we have mechanical debridement. So this is a non-selective type of debridement. So it does remove devitalized tissue, um, any debris in the wound, but it also will take good viable tissue, okay? So this is our wet to dry method. So when you add a moist um, gauze dressing to a wound, you just dampen it with saline, you let it dry, and then you peel it back. So um, I do find that patients do find this very uh, painful. And what I have come in contact myself, um, when you go to take it, it does take good tissue. So any tissue that is growing, it is taking that nice viable tissue. Not my preferred method of debridement, um, but it is a method of debridement. So I did add this little chart here. It has all the different debridement methods on it. Um, so I, everything has a rating from one to five. Um, I didn't make this chart. I did find it um, in the Chronic Wound Care book. And I thought it was an awesome way of seeing your, your best methods, okay? So one is the most desirable, where five is the least desirable. So for example here, um, surgical, the speed it is the fastest for surgical, where autolytic is the slowest. We have um, tissue selectivity here. 
um, and then we have pain, exudate, infection, and cost. Um, so if you want, you can stop the video, look at that, screenshot it, whatever you need to do. Um, it is a great resource. So that's all I have for this video. I hope it did help you um, go through the different debridement methods and better understand them. And if you haven't done so already, if you could please hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel grow and allows me to continue making these videos. So I will catch you in my next video, guys. See ya.